everyone, I am Dr. Priya Sipaha and today we are going to discuss about dowry death. Now dowry death has been discussed under section 304B of IPC. Now I really find it very pity that in 2020 also and almost it's 2021 we are still discussing about dowry death. Now before starting what is dowry death uh, I have to tell you that uh, how and why this particular uh, section has been amended in the Indian Penal Code. Now basically although dowry is something which has been started and uh, as a very kind gesture earlier and it was not considered as a dowry but it was considered as a gift which at the time of marriage a parents of bride usually gives to the parents of bridegroom and uh, bridegroom also and the family members. But by the time this particular uh, culture or custom has been taken into very, very bad shape. Now this has been uh, is now demanded and uh, this demand has been increased in such a manner that now it is not only in a form of uh, money, it is in a form of uh, property also, in a form of uh, vehicle also, of household items, utensils, any sort of thing. And it is not only that it is demanded at the time of marriage only. Now it is demanded after marriage only also. Now if we talk about 1980s, that was a time when uh, this dowry death has been increased and it was so much increased that it was necessary that to make a strict law uh, and, all, uh, and also uh, make some of the amendment in the Indian Penal Code. So that's why section 304B of Indian Penal Code discussed about dowry death. Laws which are related to dowry death. Now the first one is section 2 of Dowry Prohibition Act 1961 which is related to what is the demand of dowry or what is the meaning of the dowry. Now second one is section 304B of IPC which discusses about the definition of again dowry death. Then third is section 498A of IPC which basically discuss about the cruelty for, for the demand of the dowry. And this particular section I will make a separate video for section 498A. Uh, maybe the next video and the third one and the fourth one is a section 113 of the Indian Evidence Act. Basically you have to read section 304B along with section 113B of the Evidence Act. Then only this particular dowry act will be completed. So we are going to discuss all these sections now. Now to start with, let's understand the meaning of dowry and what exactly is a demand of dowry which is considered as an offense, which has been described under section 2 of the Dowry Prohibition Act 1961. Now this means dowry is any property or valuable security directly or indirectly agreed to be given by whom? by one party to a marriage to the another party to the marriage that means either by one party that means usually of bride to the another party that means a party of bridegroom if one party is given any sort of valuable security or any property to the another party that will be con considered as a demand of dowry now second thing is either by the parents of one party to a marriage to another person or to either party to the marriage or to any other person at or before or any time after the marriage in connection with the marriage of the said parties. That means either by the parents of the party or either by any of the persons from the bride side to either to the parents of the bridegroom or any other relative of the bridegroom. Any valuable things at the time of the marriage, if it has been given, that will be considered as a demand of dowry under Section 2 of the Dowry Prohibition Act, which is considered and which is an offense. Now, the next section is related to dowry death, which has been described under Section 304B of the Indian Penal Code. Now, first of all, I am going to read this section so that you can understand this section in detail. 
Now, this particular section states that where the death of a woman is caused by any burns or bodily injury or occurs otherwise than under normal circumstances within seven years of her marriage. Now, that is, this is important that within seven years of her marriage and it is shown that soon before her death was subjected to cruelty or harassment by her husband or any of the relative of her husband or in connection with any demand for dowry such that shall be called as dowry death and such husband or relative shall be deemed to have caused her death now as far as explanation is concerned for the purpose of subsection dowry that shall be demanded under section 2 of the dowry prohibition act which we have already discussed now whoever commits dowry death shall be punished with imprisonment for term which shall not be less than seven years but which may extend to imprisonment for life so the basic ingredients of this section is the first one is death should be caused by burn or bodily injury or by any other circumstances now this any other circumstances could be suicide also so these are the things whenever there is a death of a bride within the seven years of marriage that will be considered as a dowry death usually now it must occur as i said before the we are within the seven years of marriage then it must be revealed that soon before her marriage this is really very important point which is necessary uh, for section 115 of the evidence act also to frame that particular uh, circumstances as an offense that it must be revealed that soon before her marriage she was exposed to cruelty or harassment either by the husband or by husband's relatives or by both then the cruelty or harassment on her should be in connection with the demand of dowry it is not related to any other cruelty of harassment if it is the cruelty of harassment suppose by because of uh, it, she was not uh, given permission to do a job or any other thing that won't be considered as a dowry death there may be n number of sort of cruelty that cannot be connected with dowry death that cruelty or harassment must relate with dowry only demand of dowry only so if that is a connection that will be included under section 304b of ipc now if that particular thing will be done then the punishment could be for even minimum of seven years and maximum of life imprisonment now the nature of the offense nature of the offense is basically this particular offense is a bailable offense that means the bail can be given if they will find that this there may be chances that the accused is not guilty then it is a cognizable offense cognizable offense i have already uh, made a video on what the meaning of cognizable and non cognizable cognizable offense also uh, it is basically when the police can take a cognizant without the permission of court or magistrate then it is called as cognizable offense which is usually of serious nature or heinous nature then it is non-compoundable offense now non-compoundable and compoundable there are two degrees compoundable means where the out of the court settlement can be done and non-compoundable means where there cannot be out of the court settlement so this particular offense is a non-compoundable offense this is basically the nature of the offense nature of offense only we have already discussed that uh, this particular offense that means dowry death is a cognizable offense now in cognizable offense usually police can arrest any person without a warrant which has been mentioned under section 41 of crpc now if any person is being arrested under section 41 of crpc it is necessary that that particular arrest without a warrant must fulfill all the provisions and all the things which has been mentioned under this particular section another important section related to dowry death is section 113 that is presumption as to dowry death 
Now this section is also very important to frame anyone guilty because this section said which has been also discussed in section 304b of IPC that soon before the death of any bride or any lady it must be very clear that there is a demand of dowry and the harassment and a torture and cruelty has been done on her and then the dowry death has been uh, then, there, then there is a dowry debt. Now, this is really a tricky section and it needs lot of lots of evidences. So, uh, as far as dowry death is concerned, to frame this section, there must be, it is necessary, this section must be read along with section 113 of the Evidence Act because it may happen that uh, the death has been occurred because of some other reason and not because of the cruelty or and harassment of husband or husband relative or both. So that's all about the dowry death. I hope you like it. And if you like it, do not forget to subscribe my channel and hit the like button. You may also get the detailed notes on my website and you may also follow us on various social media platforms by the name of Law Colleague. So thank you for watching. See you soon. Bye bye.